Hi guys, in this video I like to talk about one of the most efficient unsupervised learning algorithms for outlier detection and that being an isolation forest. Now an isolation forest is especially good when it comes to high dimensional data sets and basically what the model builds is a random forest in which basically each decision tree is grown randomly. Okay, so if you're familiar with decision trees you know that basically they're a set of if-else rules that basically what they do, they use an algorithm, a recursive partitioning algorithm to repeatedly divide and subdivide the data with the goal to make it as homogeneous as possible. So at every split, the new sub, uh, subsample will be as homogeneous as possible. And basically, uh, our isolation forest uses... Um, a random forest formed out of a number of decision trees to actually do that, right? So it picks a random threshold value and then it splits the data set in two. And then as the data set gets gradually uh, chopped, right, into, into pieces, into subsamples, basically each observation eventually will get isolated from all of the others. And you would think like, how is this helpful when it comes to uh, anomaly detection. Well, the fact that in the feature space anomalies are far from the others, that means when uh, this algorithm actually chops the data down, the anomalies will end up getting isolated a lot faster than, uh, than other, than other um, uh, values which are normal. And therefore anomalies will be far from the others, therefore they will get isolated in less steps than the normal observations. And if we look at this um, uh, pretty picture here, we can actually see that uh, the way it actually works. Okay, so we have the data set and then it's, it gets chopped right at this point. And then we get two different subsamples and so on and so forth. And this gets done thousands of times. Okay, and therefore eventually all values will end up getting isolated from each other. But the ones that have been isolated quicker, those are um, anomalies in the, um, in the, in the sense of, of outlier detection, okay? So I hope it's, it's pretty, pretty clear now what, uh, what an isolation forest actually does. And you have to keep in mind that this is one of the best algorithms for outlier detection specifically because it doesn't care what type of data you feed it. It doesn't care whether it's numeric or categorical. It doesn't care uh, how many dimensions you have. It doesn't care about any of that. You don't need to actually scale uh, the data because it builds a random forest. So therefore um, you don't need to standard scale the data. Um, so it's an, a very, very efficient algorithm that you can use for outlier detection, regardless whether it's, um, um, w regardless of the problem that you have. And current in, in this implementation, what I'm doing basically, um, I'm using scikit-learn. So I'm using the implementation in scikit-learn. If we check uh, scikit-learn um, isolation forest. So it's basically this implementation and you can read all about it here as well. You can basically check out what each parameter does Okay, and um, basically when you use pandas and uh, you use it for normal medium-sized data sets, you can use scikit-learn. And if you want to use it for um, large data sets and you, and you use Spark for that, there is also an implementation for, uh, for Spark and you can find it uh, here. Basically, it's uh, the Spark implementation, Spark iForest and it's extremely good. I've used it previously for, for large data sets for fraud detection. And, uh, and yeah, you, it, it's very easy to, to use it and, and implement it in Spark as well. So therefore you have this algorithm available both for medium sized data sets and large data sets with Spark. So it's, uh, it's, it's really good. Now let's, uh, let's actually look to see how, how everything is done. Okay. So we're first, we're loading all the libraries and we're reading a financial 
uh, data set. Basically, this is a synthetic financial data set, and I got it from this link from uh, from Kaggle. And what I've done previously, I've actually randomly sampled 10% of the data set because it was quite big. It had, I think, 6 million rows, and I just wanted to get a subsample of that. And I also removed the labels because it was already labeled with whether it was fraud or not. So if we check the data, right, we see that these are the columns. If we check the length, yeah, you see, basically our length is 636,000. Okay, let's go ahead and check the head for the for the data frame and we have all of these uh, all of these features okay so we can see that we have uh, categorical and uh, numeric features okay and uh, the numeric features they're also they're they're both continuous and discrete okay because we have um, a couple of um, I think yeah, we have this unnamed feature that is discrete, but I don't know exactly what specifically this means, but regardless what it is. And yeah, and the other ones are continuous like amount and uh, old balance destination and, and all that stuff. And we also have categorical features like type. And if we check the value counts, right, we have pretty clear uh, values for, for that column. And if we look at the value counts for the amount, we have a whole bunch of of values basically this being a continuous um, variable so let's look let's, let's do a plot of these two and we can actually see we have a bar plot for the categorical feature and then we have uh, a box plot for uh, the continuous uh, uh, feature okay so we see that for the amount we have a lot of outliers as the mean is very very low the median is very very low and we have a whole bunch of outliers uh, present in the um, in the feature while for uh, while for the categorical uh, variable we have this distribution okay so now let's actually run our isolation forest because we see that we have a blend of continuous and categorical features and this is pretty good when it comes to actually showing the power of this algorithm the first thing that we need to do is actually set the contamination to a specific um, percentage. Okay, so here we set it to 1%. And the contamination is needed for an isolation forest because if you look at the documentation here, basically is the amount of contamination of the data set, the proportion of outliers in the data set that we consider uh, to have prior to that, right? So we need to kind of, if, if we have subject matter expertise, then it's pretty uh, easy for us to, uh, to assume a specific contamination level. We say, okay, we, we know that this, for this type of data, we usually get around 3% uh, bad values like outliers. And for this type of problem, we might have only 1% and so on and so forth. So for each specific data set that you analyze, you might have some sort of subject matter expertise that tells you, look, uh, for this data set, we only have like around 0.5 or 1%. Um, outliers in general and therefore our isolation algorithm will actually output um, a number uh, in, in, that, in that area. Okay, so if we have a hundred thousand records and we have a contamination of uh, let's say one percent, right, we're gonna get uh, one thousand. Okay, so what one thousand outliers. So um, let's, uh, let's go back and basically we run this right we have our data and i've already ran this before because i didn't want to waste time with actually training the model because as you can see it takes like two minutes and, and a bit and then i just said like i'm gonna just run everything so basically the first thing that we need to do is label encode okay so we're going to label encode the data because even though our isolation forest can take in any type of data regardless whether it's like regardless of the type, we still need to convert all of the object types, we need to convert them to, um, uh, to numeric va uh, values, okay? So that's why we label encode. 
Here with the label encoding, we're actually just filling the nulls. Okay, so I'm filling the nulls with uh, a string value for um, uh, for anything that is string, and for everything else, I'm just filling with minus 999. And then we get this data. We we get uh, the head of this data looking as it looks now. So you can see for our type before we had uh, these values: cash out, payment, cash in, transfer, and debit. But now we have. Uh, but now we have zero, three, and basically from zero to four, I think, because we have five categories. So each category was labeled with, with a numeric value. And here for, uh, for the isolation forest, it doesn't matter whether uh, it's ordinal or not, okay? So uh, label encoding is perfectly fine. We don't need to do any sort of one-hot encoding for, for this problem, okay? And now we're training the model and uh, basically we set the number of estimators to 1000 and we're fitting, uh, we're, we're fitting the data. It takes about two minutes and 45 seconds. And then basically what I'm doing here, I'm actually predicting uh, the category, right? Of course, whether it's um, outlier or not, basically zero or one, okay? And then I'm, I'm mapping it because the, the, the isolation forest actually predicts ones and minus ones. So ones for uh, normal values and minus ones for outliers. But I find it like easier to actually look at data and mapping it out to zero, whether it's a normal value and one, whether it's an outlier. Usually this is how, uh, how, I, uh, how I visualize these outputs. Because it's, 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 when you have a one, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward that it's like um, an anomaly and then zero is just the default value. And now if we look at the value counts, we can see that our isolation forest actually um, categorized the data, right? We have 6,363 anomalies in our data set of basically 630,000. And if we would divide this, right? Let's divide 6363 divided by 629899 we get 0 0.01. So exactly the contamination that we specified uh, here when we actually created the model. Okay, so always keep in mind that based on the contamination, you will get different, uh, a different number of, of results. Okay, so the higher the contamination, the more our algorithm will uh, try to find as anomalous uh, data.